I'm Mr. C. Uh, my name is Jim Serenelli, and I'm the lead instructor of, of the program and the coordinator for the fire and EMS and the other things that we do. And welcome to public safety. Thank and uh, glad you're here. And uh, the, the conversation that uh, that we started will just carry over into what we do. If at any point you have any questions on anything that I talk about or that we go over or any pictures that you see, uh, don't hesitate to, to sing out. Uh, it's very informal. Uh, I apologize for uh, for not broadcasting from the school, but uh, I'm I'm in a remote uh, setting, so the only reason I bring that up is because sometimes the technology might not want to cooperate to some degree, and I apologize for that in advance. But uh, but I guarantee you, we'll get through what we need to get through. Okay. Yeah. All right, Miss Dubel, you want to run that first video? All right, sure will. If you would please. Jordan Eldwick, this is public safety. We're 19 seniors and 13 juniors strong. Mr. Ellswick is a senior in uh, in this year's class, this, grad, this year's graduating class. Uh, and that red helmet that he has on his head means that he's the team leader of these, uh, these students that are putting this car fire out. Uh, the, this is representative of our firefighter program. It's one of the things that we do. We actually do go out to, uh, to this uh, particular area here and uh, in, in Holland Township, and we uh, we disable and set cars on fire, and then learn different ways of, of putting them out. So that takes us to the uh, the slide with all of the information on it. Mr. C, and excuse there... me for just a moment. We have Kiana has joined us as well, so I just wanted you to be aware. Ah, good. Hi, Kiana. Kiana Collins. Hello, thank you for having me. Oh, thank you for being here. Welcome to Public Safety. I'm Mr. C. Uh, so we're at the, uh, if you notice at the top of the page there, it says TCTC Public Safety, we run to what others fear. That is kind of like our slogan because the nature of these particular uh, professions, that is what we do. Uh, we are the ones who are willing and able to, to do things that other individuals either cannot or will not do. And that means that it takes a special kind of person to want to do that. So what happens in public safety is our job is, uh, is to bring the individuals who come into the program up to the level of the profession so that they get a firsthand understanding of what it takes to be one of those people. Uh, it's a two-year course of study. That two-year course of study, if you want to follow along on the left-hand side there, uh, it involves firefighter one and two certification, and that certification is from the state of Ohio. Uh, EMT basic certification, that is from the National Registry of Emergency Medical Technician. Uh, the criminal justice is not for certification, only because you have to go through the police academy but we prepare you for the academy. What we teach you is from the Ohio Peace Officer Training Academy and the Ohio Department of Education. The 911 Emergency Telecommunications course, uh, again, is, is for certification. That's a 911 Dispatcher Fundamental course. And uh, to take that course and to, to acquire that 40 hour certificate means that you can go someplace like the 911 Center and how in there and get your foot in the door uh, to be eligible to go in there and, and start working initially part-time and evolve to full-time uh, 911 telecommunicator. NIMS is the National Incident Management System. That is the, uh, the, the mechanism that every, uh, every agency across the country, state, federal, and local uses to handle uh, emergencies of, of large and small sizes. And the certifications there are twofold, a 100 and a 700 course uh, that are part of our fire course right below that is the hazmat uh, that is also for certification for hazardous material and that also is part of the firefighter course. Public safety core 
is part of the structure that we that we implement in our program that allow you to get a real good feel for what it would be like to work on a police or a fire department based on the, the paramilitary structure. And we'll talk about that a little bit in the next column. And the academic part of it is something that we also, uh, we, we wanna make sure that everybody who comes into the program is aware of because of the significance of academics in our particular professions. If math and science and English uh, and those types of academic subjects didn't mean anything before to you, believe me, the, the applications that they have uh, in firefighting and criminal justice and, and uh, emergency medical technicians uh, will convince you that learning to, to be proficient in academics is an extremely compo important component to be a good police officer, a good firefighter, good EMT. Moving to the middle where it says keys to success, the successful student uh, cadet. First of all, we, we want you to know that, uh, that this is not for everybody. As I stated initially, uh, this is for folks who even at the tender young age that they come in as, as juniors, uh, at least believe at that time that this is something that they really wanna do. But we want you to be realistic about it and understand that what you're gonna do is, is the real world training for real world certification. It's not gonna be just like what you see on TV. Uh, what you see on TV is certainly real. There are, there's, there's a lot of excitement to it. There are a lot of things that, that are, are very unique to these professions that are fun to do and, and are, are great challenges. And we do those things. But what you don't see and, and where some folks stub their toe is when you come to realize how, how much studying there is to it and how much the academic portion of, of, of these, these particular uh, professions really matters in order to do them well and to do them right. And that's the only way that we wanna do them. Uh, the, the desire to be in these professions and the develop maturity, those are things that you, that you acquire over time uh, you come in, you're, uh, you're interviewed as a sophomore, you come in as a junior, but by the time you graduate as a senior, uh, you, believe me, you have grown. Uh, because in order to be successful at what we do, what we do uh, you're going to have to develop the things, the traits in you that are going to make you uh, uh, a better person, going to make you a better student, and certainly make you a better firefighter, EMT, or dispatcher. Or any other uh, any other aspect or uh, of these professions that you choose to be, the ac academic integrity we just talked about again it's extremely important. As is the physical fitness component. Being physically fit is something that we we want everybody to do just for the sake of their own health, as to, to be healthy and live, live better lives. But to be firefighters and EMTs and nine one one dispatchers and police officers, that physical fitness is extremely important, especially obviously in the fire and the EMS and the criminal justice part of it. Uh, so we have a, a very mobile and a very uh, rigorous physical fitness training program. It starts when you come in in your junior year and that PT is something that uh, we, we like to do on a regular basis. Uh, it's not boot camp. We don't force you to do things that you can't do, but we do uh, encourage you through the, the series of different means that we do train physically to improve the status uh, of your own physical fitness based on what your needs are and, uh, and where you need to go in order to get better at it. We are a paramilitary structure, and that's going back to the, to the public safety core part of it where you can learn the, the, the qualities and, and the, the skills of being firefighters and police officers, but if you can't fit within that paramilitary structure of a police department, meaning they have rules and regulations, there's a, a higher element of discipline, a higher standard for conduct, uh, a professional appearance. Uh, you have to learn to take orders and give orders. It's a, it's a higher level of accountability and responsibility than many professions. And you have to be able to meet those qualities and agendas as well as knowing how to be a good police officer to make arrests, a good firefighter to, to deal with, a, with a, a structure fire, a good EMT when you're diagnosing somebody who may be, may be having a stroke or something else that, 
that you need to be on the ball about. So that paramilitary structure is important. You'll stand inspection, you'll do a little bit of marching, uh, you'll have uh, a chain of command, all of those types of things. The triad of support that we talk about involves uh, you as a student, me and your, uh, and your other teachers as the, as the school's educational component, and then mom, dad, uh, grandma, aunt, a guardian, whoever is at home with you who takes, uh, takes care and responsibility for you when, when you're not in school, it can help, who can help you when you're out of the, uh, the purview of your instructors here at school. So the idea is in, is in, th in three years, in two years, the time that takes you to go from a sophomore to a senior, uh, we want you to be successful. And the three primary elements of that are you, your instructors, and the folks at home. We go to the uh, far right there with the desired qualities and skills, the prerequisites. Uh, Self-discipline is a must. You've got to be able to discipline yourself to do the things that you need to do and also to do the things that you don't want to do, but have to do well. As a police officer, uh, there are gonna be a lot of things that you're not gonna like doing because people don't call us to sit down and have dinner with them. They call us because there's a problem and they need you to fix that problem. And very often you deal with things that are, that are pretty nasty uh, and you have to do a lot of mundane work as well. But if you mess it up and you don't get it right, Maybe you make a mistake on a piece of evidence or maybe something else that you don't get right because you didn't have the wherewithal to, to, to really make yourself do it because you didn't want to do it. You didn't like doing it. And because of that, maybe a criminal goes free. Uh, maybe a bad guy gets away uh, in an EMS situation. Maybe somebody uh, goes from bad to worse in terms of uh, whatever is wrong with them. So that self-discipline and the willingness to learn is extremely important. We help you develop your critical thinking skills, meaning you're able to think on your feet. It's a dynamic environment. Things happen very fast. Uh, and some of them can be, uh, can, can be pretty uh, full adrenaline dump worthy, if, if, if that's a, a worthy phrase. You've got to be able to think. You've got to be able to move. You've got to be able to act. And you develop those critical thinking skills, and we help you, we help you do that. Your communication skills are actually probably one of the, if not the most important, because your ability to communicate verbally, looking someone in the eye and talk with them uh, is an absolute necessity when you're talking about a police officer who is investigating a crime or an EMT who is trying to determine what's wrong with the patient or a firefighter who is trying to determine just how many people are left inside that burning building and who and what and where they are. So you've got to be able to develop communication skills that go far beyond being able to text on a phone. You have to be interpersonal in your communication capabilities, and those skills are very important, and we help you with those too. A 2.0 to 2.5 minimum GPA is something that we set as our minimum standards. Well, we Obviously, if you're a 3.0 or a 3.5 or even a 4.0, and we do have those as well, uh, it enhances your ability to be successful in, in these particular occupations and, and academic, uh, especially the academic part of it. Uh, but at 2.0 or 2.5, you're certainly uh, in the ball game when it comes to your ability to understand and, uh, and to be able to handle the rigorous academics that are a part of these, of these, these pro this program's courses. We come down to the things that uh, the final three things here are the attendance. Uh, again, we try to make it as much like a work environment as we can. One of the things that all employers say is most important to them is, is attendance. And that's learning how to come to work. And when I say learning how to come to work, that's exactly what I mean. It's not easy sometimes to get out of bed and, and, and go to work. It's much easier to pick up the phone and call off. But the fact of the matter is, is that the folks are going to hire you, you as police officers and firefighters and EMTs and dispatchers. They need you to come to work. The good conduct part of it is another extremely important part. In addition to getting to getting the work, it's important that you understand the, the necessity to be professional when you get there. Uh, our standards of conduct are normally higher than, than just uh, John and Jane Doe citizens. And it's meant to be that way because we're supposed to set the example for society. And if you watch TV and you see when, when things go bad for, for police officers in, in particular, 
uh, it doesn't reflect well on, on the other folks in the industry. But the fact is, is that nine out of 10 police officers have very good conduct. Uh, and, and they're the ones that set the standards for, for, for not only the rest of their department, but society as well. And the intangibles uh, run the spectrum of everything else in body, mind, and spirit that come into play when you start talking about going out and serving the public as only police officers, firefighters, EMS, 911 people can do. So it's a noble profession uh, to do this in public safety, this two-year course of study. Uh, you're going to graduate from high school as a level two firefighter, assuming you're successful. Uh, you're going to graduate with either an EMT basic certification and or a 911 emergency telecommunications certification. You're going to get foundational law enforcement training. It's going to enable you to hit the ground running when you go to the police academy. You're going to have national incident management and hazmat certification. You're going to have all of your, your academics uh, that you would take at the school. And uh, you're going to get have the opportunity to get college credit, be eligible for the military. Uh, it's it's a fantastic opportunity in high school to do these types of things. It's the only type of environment in high school uh, setting that you can do this kind of thing. And TCTC is is about as good as it gets at it. Uh, we've been doing this for a long time. We're very dedicated people. Um, the staff and the school is is all professional grade. And it's an awesome opportunity if this is the kind of thing that you want to do and you're willing to do what needs to be done in order to be successful there. You also have the opportunity to get college credit uh, the, it, out of the military if you choose to go into the military, which many of our people do. And in addition, on top of all of this, you're also going to have your own high school diploma from your home school. So I know that's a lot. But hopefully, uh, you know, I got uh, as, as much as I can get across to you in the time frame that we have. We talk about some of the folks that have that have been successful in the program. And this is Mackenzie Pasco. Mackenzie uh, is a recent graduate of TCTC. She came to us as a sophomore. A very, very unique situation. By unique, I mean that Mackenzie was faced with some challenges uh, that most of us will never experience in our lifetime. Challenges, challenges that could literally have, uh, in, in most situations, would have ruled her out from being able to do these kinds of, uh, of things. Her, her, her goal was, and her mantra was that I will do this. Uh, I want the opportunity to do it. It's my true passion to become a firefighter and I will do whatever I need to do in order to make that happen. Two years later, Mackenzie is the first female firefighter for Hubbard's fire department. Uh, she knocked it out of the park. She worked very, very hard. She overcame all of the obstacles, every challenge. She is one of the poster children for what, what it takes for somebody who really wants something to, to work through uh, challenges that otherwise would, uh, would probably prevent people from accomplishing their goals and actually achieve exactly what she wanted to do and then some. She's currently in college at YSU and she's pursuing uh, emergency medical certification and she's got a great future ahead of her. This young man is Stephen Kissack and he also is representative of, of what the best uh, to come out of TCTC uh, can do. Stephen came out of TCTC with his uh, fire, uh, level two firefighter certification and his EMT basic, went down to YSU, got his bachelor's degree in criminal justice, went through the police academy while he was in college, and then came out and got full-time employment currently as a champion township firefighter and paramedic. He also served as a police officer uh, before he went on full time, and he got he he hit the uh, the triple crown as 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 we call it, uh, he became all three of what we do in in at the professional level, professional certified firefighter, police officer, EMT now paramedic, and he's got a couple of comments that he wants to make for you. My name is Stephen Kitsack. I'm a 2010 graduate of the public safety program at the Trumbull Current Technical Center. Uh, the public safety program allowed me to become a state certified firefighter and EMT uh, 
all prior to graduating from high school. Um, this course, of course, had me job ready soon after graduating. Without the program, I would not have had the jump start into what I now call a career. Because of the special elective programs offered at TCTC, uh, they additionally helped me prepare for the next step, and that was become, becoming a paramedic. Uh, I found the anatomy and physiology course very beneficial for my post-secondary education at YSU, and it gave me a jump start in preparing for paramedic school. Currently, I'm a full-time firefighter for Champion Township, uh, where I hold the rank of engineer. Without the program, I wouldn't have had the head start in the career that I have today. It prepared me for the workforce, it taught me responsibility, accountability, and most of all, a sense of ownership when completing the at times difficult coursework. I'm proud to have been a part of this great program. I would recommend it to anybody interested in becoming anything within the ranks of uh, public safety. The program offers guidance to becoming a firefighter, EMT, police officer, dispatcher, I mean the list goes on and on. Uh, I hope you find yourself wanting to help your community in the future. And if that's the case, I hope you find yourself in a seat in the public safety program. Uh, you'll enjoy the experience as much as I did. Thank you. So in Stephen and in Mackenzie, you have uh, you have examples of folks who who came in and and got made the most of the opportunity. Uh, there, it goes to show that anybody who comes in and who gets this right who really dedicates themselves to to making themselves uh, achieve their 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 highest level of proficiency uh, can do anything. And uh, they went on and and they're out there in the real world now and the sky's the limit. Uh, they are definitely folks that, that are very inspirational in everything that they do. So TCTC is a, is a, a, a very unique place to go to school. Uh, it's an amazing place uh, when you consider what, what it does for folks and what it enables them to do at a very young age. This is the public safety career tree and uh, it, it tells you, uh, gives you an idea of some of the professions that you can uh, not only come out of the school as a senior or graduating senior with certification in, but what you can go on to do uh, as in the next phases of your, of your professional life. Uh, we have folks who are working in all fields uh, of endeavor. We have folks in the military in every branch of the military. Uh, we have them working at state, federal, and local uh, levels of law enforcement. Uh, it is an awesome opportunity. And the, all you have to, to really consider is first and foremost, is this something that I really want to do? And then be willing to work long enough and hard enough uh, and do the right things in the right way at the right time uh, to be able to achieve it. It is an excellent opportunity. And when you cross that stage and they announce you as a firefighter, uh, and, and you know that you've got a, a, an EMT certification in, your, in your, your pocket and you can go to the police academy or you can go up to the 911 center. Uh, Kiana, you want to know about Navy SEAL? This is an excellent start for a high school student to, to start to learn what it takes to be a Navy SEAL. Absolutely. We have folks uh, that have come out, they're working on nuclear submarines. We have other folks that are special forces in the military. Uh, there's no limit to what you can do if you set your mind to doing it and do it the right way. TCTC presents and the public safety program presents folks who are interested in these types of careers with the first link in their, in their, their operative chain uh, in achieving that dream. And it's a big jump start because when you think about going, uh, when you graduate from high school, usually it's with your diploma and that diploma is a very valuable commodity but when you add all of this to it and add professional credentialing to your and all of this experience to your to your high school diploma, uh, it really, really enhances uh, what you're going to do at the next phase and gives you a big jump start on becoming the, the what, whatever you want to do, living your dream. Go for your dream, whatever that happens to be. Uh, if it's public safety, then uh, here's a glimpse at what it looks like in our lab. Uh, on the left-hand side, the fire lockers, that uh, fire pole goes up to the second level where we have a classroom in our, com our communication center. The right side is our main classroom there. You can see the desks on the right and the tables. That's where we sit for school. The rest of the lab we use uh, for training. 
uh, and for play, see the basketball hoop back there. We also, uh, we work hard, we play hard, uh, but it's a great environment to learn in. Very unique, very special. Left-hand side here, we're involved in uh, crime scene investigation and, and traffic stops, law enforcement. The right side is part of, they're demonstrating some of our, our uh, defensive tactics training. Uh, we turned, we, we trained uh, as police officers to not only take care of ourselves, but also to be able to use force in, in exactly the right degree necessary to take someone into custody with hopefully without having to hurt anybody. So we run the full spectrum of what it takes and we use it state of the art equipment. This fire truck is, is a state of the art fire truck. Uh, we acquired it from a, from an active fire department that purchased a new one. Uh, we use it in all of our fire training on the right hand side, uh, down there at the bottom, you can see where uh, we have, we're training again in the car fire thing. Uh, that fire hose, you'll notice there's more than one person on the, that hose. That's because it's a real fire hose pumping water out of a real hydrant, a real fire truck. And it's not like you're, uh, you're watering your flowers with mom's garden hose. That's a serious piece of equipment there. And you got to learn how to do it because that's what it takes to put out those structure fires. That aerial ladder on the left-hand side there is almost 100 feet high. You climb that as part of your training on the right-hand side. Is a, is a structure fire simulator. Uh, when we do not have the luxury of being able to burn a house as our final exam, we go into the simulator and that, uh, that pretty much gives you an idea of what it's gonna be like to walk into a fire. Left-hand side there, YSU, this is for fun. Uh, we field trip to YSU where we went into the, uh, we used their, climb their uh, high ropes course and uh, went up there, the, the, the climbing mountain that they have there on the right-hand side. Uh, that tank on the top is a genuine bona fide M1A1 Abrams tank for the Ohio and, uh, Army National Guard. Uh, we went out there and do go out there on field trips, uh, courtesy of the National Guard. And uh, in addition to being able to, to work with all of this great equipment when we train, we also have the opportunity to go out and see some pretty amazing things. So that's pretty much what we have to say. Uh, it is now uh, 828 and uh, we wanna make sure that we get you everything that you need here uh, before you part company with us. Uh, so do you have any questions that I can answer at this time?